afternoon, Highlands, and welcome to another edition of the Highlander News. Broadcasting live from the Highlands News Studio in Fort Thomas, Kentucky. I'm Sam Rosensteel. And I'm Corinne Carnahan. A reminder to students and faculty, the third quarter will end next Friday, March 6th. Please make sure to keep up with your grades and turn in any assignments due for this quarter. Report cards go home next week, March 13th. Good luck to our swimmers and divers at State this weekend. There are 22 team members going down to the University of Louisville this year, including talented middle schoolers and five-time regional champ Carly Hill. If you are interested in watching the meet but are unable to go down to Louisville, you can watch your Bluebird swimmers at khsaa.com. The Highlands High School Strings Concert will be held on March 10th in the Performing Arts Center. Come out and enjoy an evening filled with great orchestral music performed by our impressive String Symphonia class held here at Highlands. And now for our latest edition of Making a Difference, a segment highlighting a student at Highlands who created a charity her freshman year that gives meals to homeless people. Madison has more. Anybody that's hungry can come here. Um, there are people out there that uh, they don't have anywhere else to go. They don't have anywhere to go and eat an evening meal. Um, and, and I'm not talking just your homeless population. I'm talking your working poor. I'm talking children on the street that just don't have anywhere else to go. They, they know this is a safe place. Yeah. Yeah. So I had to give Mackenzie a plug. Oh, that's good. That's I just good. gave Mackenzie a plug. <laughs> gave me a lead. Yeah. yeah, good. <laughs> Homeless shelters save lives. There is no arguing that. But they don't run successfully without hard work and passion from people of all different ages. One student at Highlands is spending her time making sure these shelters are great. I didn't know Karen personally, but I knew that like she was so nice and just ran such a great program. Just a little stop, little stop, and then you go to these. They can stick in the backpack usually. Usually we have a lot of meat uh, on Mondays and Fridays, which is good for our families. They'll take those. I went and introduced the idea to her, and we talked about it for a little bit, and she liked it, and they all just kind of hopped on board, and it's just expanded, and they are amazing people, and I love them. I buy all of the supplies myself. Um, if they're not donated to me. So definitely like donating peanut butter or granola bars or chips or you know Capri Suns, anything like that is awesome. But if you would ever wanna actually help me make the meals, that would be just as incredible too because they they're a little time consuming. So when you have like someone helping you, like it's a lot faster. So I do it because it's important to me. And I think the more people that know about it, like the better it can be because then they can start giving it to more people and it can expand to more places. We wish the charity the best of luck going forward and we hope you continue to help those in need. Thank you Mackenzie for working to improve our community. February is Black History Month, a month in which we honor the accomplishments and contributions of African Americans throughout history. In honor of Black History Month, the Highlander News' own Alex highlights two influential African Americans that changed the fields of politics and athletics. Here at the Highlander News, we decided to highlight a few not as well known black history figures. First is Thurgood Marshall. Marshall became the first African American Supreme Court Justice when he was appointed in 1967 by Lyndon B. Johnson. He began his law career in 1934 as an attorney for the NAACP. He became known as Mr. Civil Rights for his work on 32 Supreme Court cases as an attorney. During his 27 years of practicing law, he was most well known for his victory in a landmark decision of Brown versus the Board of Education. During his time on the Supreme Court, he was known for upholding the rights of all people, including stopping government regulation on the freedom of speech and abortion. Marshall devoted his life to the enhancement and civil equality, and he inspired many others to do the same since his death in 1993. Another famous black history figure is Wilma Rudolph, born in 1940 to a family of 22 children. Rudolph was dubbed the fastest woman in the world after her performance in the 1960 Olympics. 
She won gold in the 100 as well as gold in the 200 while setting an Olympic record. After her victory, she paid tribute to Jesse Owens, whose performance in the 1936 Olympics inspired her to strive for victory. She was admitted into the National Black Sports and Entertainment Hall of Fame for both her success in the Olympics and her humanitarian efforts off the track. As February comes to a close, we would like to thank and recognize all those who strove for civil rights. As we look towards the future, we as a nation should continue to strive for civil liberties and equality. Sam? As February draws to a close, we remember the accomplishments of African Americans and we celebrate those of Thurgood Marshall and Wilma Rudolph. And now with the Highlander Sports News, introducing resident sports analyst Ezra Plymesser. Oh, thanks, Sam. This time of the year, we are at the transition from the end of winter sports and the start of the spring sports seasons. To close out the regular season, the boys basketball team won their season finale against Beachwood at home, capping off a season with several achievements that are well worth noting. They were able to pull out a four-game win streak about halfway through the season, and along with seniors Kenny Ball, Justin Wire, and Parker Harris, they were also able to provide varsity playing time to several of their underclassmen, hopefully getting them better prepared to have an impressive run next season. They are victorious in the first round of district playoffs beating Dayton, but concluded their season in a very competitive loss to NCC. The girls had a nearly historically good regular season and are looking to run deep into playoff competition. During the regular season, the girls managed to only have three losses, all of which were within three points. They also had several play players signing to extend their career beyond high school and play at the college level. Along with the seniors' success, they were very strong contributions from their underclassmen. They dominated Bellevue in the district tournament with a commanding 66-13 win and later won the district championship against NCC last night. They will take on Holmes to begin regional playoff competition. The boys' and girls' swim teams head to state today after competing very well in regional competition, with the girls' and boys' placing fourth in the 200-yard relay, along with impressive freestyle and butterfly performances. Carly Hill also took first place in the one-meter dive by a dominating 50 points over the runner-up, and Highlands even had another representative placing in the top 10 of, the, of that same event, with sophomore Abby Wire placing sixth. The dance team competed in the National Jam Fest Showcase and had first place results from the JV and varsity teams in the variety dance, POM, and hip hop. The dance team has contests lined up, including a trip to Florida for a national showcase. To preview the upcoming baseball season, Alex gives us a look at tryouts and season projections. Let's see what he has for us. This year's baseball team has six of their eight everyday starters coming back and along with that a loading pitching staff. This team will consist of 14 seniors, which is the most the team has had in a very long time and is probably one of the deepest in the state. That said, the baseball team is on a mission after coming up short in the regional championship last year. Let's hear what some of the players and staff have to say about this upcoming season. Well, we're looking to uh, go out and first of all beat New Cath and Cupcath. That's always the uh, number one priority. Um, you know, we, we want to compete. We want to compete with everybody we play. Uh, we're, you know, we've got a big schedule. We're playing a lot of GCL teams. Uh, playing a lot of teams from downstate, some of the better teams in the state of Kentucky. And we want to beat all those guys. The depth we have with the seniors, underclassmen, and uh, I think we're going to have a pretty good year. We're losing one senior pitcher from last year, but we're getting a lot of underclassmen, so we're going to be pretty deep in our pitching staff this year. So The expectations are pretty high at this point. Uh, we've had multiple years uh, getting to the ninth region finals. Um, it would be nice to finish out the season wrapping up the ninth region, heading down to state. Hopefully we can get there. Well, first we got to uh, win districts, which I think we have a good chance of doing. Then we want to win region, but our uh, ultimate goal would definitely be to end up in Lexington and to hopefully win state. As you can tell, this team has very high expectations and have a legitimate chance to bring back Han's first baseball state championship trophy. And strong performances from our Ozone during that season. That's all we have for sports. Back to you, Sam. Thanks, Ezra. As winter sports are wrapping up with victories, we hope this winning trend continues into spring. Make sure to come out and support the Ladybirds as they continue in the regional tournament this year. 27 students from the 4th Congressional District of Kentucky have been nominated for acceptance to four of the nation's top military schools, including two from Highlands High School. 
Congratulations to Meredith Lasky, who has been accepted into the uh, United States Naval Academy, and to Parker Harris, who has been accepted into the United States Military Academy. Congratulations to you both on your nominations, and thank you for answering your call to serve your country. That's all for this edition of the Highlander News. Once again, I'm Sam Rosenstiel. And I'm Crane Carnahan. Have an excellent weekend, Highland.